Carolee, I, 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 the, the, prob the problem is trying to make it in Australia is difficult right now because some of the basics are missing. For mm. instance, there's no glass industry in Brisbane anymore because the, the latte sippers in the middle of town have, have caused the Queensland government to ban sand mining on, on Stradbroke Island. So the sand that used to come across and create an economy on an island just off the coast of Brisbane, beautiful island, best beach in South East Queensland, uh, those, those sand, that sand mining industry is gone, so the glass making industry so where do, is gone. So where, where do we get glass from? China. Where, where do we get our steel from? I mean, China. Uh, where do we get I mean, our washing machines from? China. You know, crazy. I mean, all, all the, a lot of the topics we'll cover tonight, it comes down to one thing, that Australia really needs to open up its internal borders. The other thing is, you know, yep. the education sector. I don't think that there is anything wrong with international students being able to come back to the universities and the higher education institutions as long as they do their two weeks in quarantine and then let, let them go, let them go and study. Um, everyone is having to serve a quarantine period, but, you know education people are losing their jobs there as well and we, we need to open up these borders because what what our state governments are failing to realize is especially here in western australia pre-covid so 10 weeks ago our economy wasn't doing too too well at all um there are a lot of problems these are as you say going to be magnified um at the end of that six month period and the way is to just mm. open the borders as mike jeffrey said our natural isolation as an island gives us perfect protection anyhow. I think we did a great job in closing the international borders, but now we've seen where the curve is. I mean, I have relatives in New York and I've been speaking with them and emailing them and I actually said to my cousin today, um, well, we've got, we, you know, we've got a rate of one. She thought I was talking about 1,000. She said, oh, 1K. And I said, no, one and she said you've got a one. population of two and a half million people and you have one active case of coronavirus whereas in new york city we know that it's gone down from 700 dying a day to 300 which is very weirdly yeah, good awful. news but the fact of the matter is i think that there has been a massive scaremongering campaign where the data you know it show what it, what this actually shows is it shows australians and young australians an actual taste of how socialism will work and how a massive scare and fear campaign has closed down the industry. As we said, when we were five weeks into lockdown, we'd already lost $50 billion. And this is going to, this is going to be paid back in generations. And it is actually scary when you put an objective head on your shoulders to show how this country really has been brought to its knees. So I know that People keep saying there is a roadmap out of it and we've got to be careful and careful. But there is a whole cohort of people that seem to have forgotten that for a lot of small businesses in Australia, they've got their properties on the line and every day that goes by is a day nearer to bankruptcy. I mean, as I said, in Western Australia, waxing salons, beauty parlours are able to open up from next weekend. The lady that I go to, I mean, you know, she owns a couple of salons and she was... She was panicking, saying, if I can't do this, I'm going to go under. Yeah. And there's just, there are so many but of these stories. And, I mean, I wrote, I wrote in Spectator today about Valandis on a sporting thing. He was ridiculed eight weeks ago, like Donald Trump was, for saying, I need to save my yeah. sport, save the code, let's get us back. People were just almost cowered into submission. Um, and now people are apologising and saying, hey, he's showing the way. But he actually made an important point that our data... Our figures. I mean, a lot of these decisions being made by bureaucrats and government well, people—they haven't had to take a pay cut. They're, they're not about to lose their jobs or their livelihoods.